Oh, okay, good. Thank you. Um, so hey, a couple of things. If anybody wants, wants to come in, they can. Um, the um, fresh off the call today, which was interesting, um, it was the Bic up, and um, the, you always heard of the one click rule for marketing. Well, and if I'm looking sideways, my screen is there, but my camera's here, so I'm not. Okay. Um, so <laughs> the one click rule is a, a NAR rule. So that is not a North Carolina real estate commission rule. So the commission says that there is no such thing as a one click rule. So any post you make, any marketing, any advertising, anything you say, do, speak, whatever to the commission, if there's a complaint, like the one click is not going to cover you. Um, like, but I can get to it in one click and that's not enough. Um, mm -hmm. And it actually has to be your firm. It can't that it can't say like just saying hashtag KW is not enough because we're KW Central, so it's specific because um, we're doing business as KW Central. So I thought that was kind of a biggie um, that I need to get out to everybody because um, <clears throat> that's a major change. We've always kind of said, oh, it's a one click rule, and there is no such thing as a one click rule. So you're not safe with that anymore. Um, can you back up and explain what that means, Jason, though? What I guess yes, what do you Sure. So what the one click rule is is the general public, if you have any social media posts or okay. any marketing or any advertising, as long uh -huh. as the client can find out who you work for or with within one click, uh huh, it's acceptable. Well, okay. that's fine with association of realtors, and that's where people kind of get messed up sometimes. NAR and NC Realtors, that's fine with them. It's not okay with the Real Estate Commission. So the one-click rule don't mean anything to the commission. If someone says, I, I saw this ad and, you know, I don't know who this person works for and it was turned in, technically you could be reprimanded for that. Um, and if you were, it was habitual, then they could take further action. Um, the other thing is I'm getting ready to put out to you all a most common list of material facts questions so that you need if you're on a listing appointment like you need to ask these or if you're making an offer on a house and you you know you might want to run over this list to see if you see any of those before you make an offer um also with a link to um the master plan for the municipality where the house is um like if someone said i you know i hear airplanes all day long and we say, well, FedEx just extended their runway. We knew that was coming 10 years ago. Well, if we didn't disclose that, that could be a real issue. Um, so we do need the master municipality plan, um, at least accessible, but so we can share. Um, like if they don't know that I had some clients, you know, when they built the Beltline around Greensboro, it took 12 houses away from a development um, kind of off of, um, Portia, help me. It's off of um, North Church Street Elm over in that area. Um, yeah, is it, I want to say 840. Is, it, is that what we're talking about, the 840 loop? Yeah, the 840 loop took about took out some houses in some neighborhoods. Um, mm -hmm. Literally, I had a client that actually, we sold their house and the state bought it because um, they um, were... Um, it took their house to build the, the road. Um, again, that one, every ad has to have the actual firm name. Um, the other thing that they're coming down really hard on is um, closing coordinators acting outside of their realm. Um, mm. And they got closing coordinators explaining if they're licensed, that's one thing. If they're a licensed closing coordinator, they can place a lockbox on a house, obtain a key, act as a courier, um, explain a document. Um, they cannot negotiate for you. That falls on you, the agent. Um, they can answer questions about a general questions about a property. They can host the open house um, if you hire them to do that. But if they're not licensed, we can't. they can't be practicing brokerage. Um, so that one's coming for sure. Um, So that was a 
biggie. The other thing is your legal name on your card. Um, like if I was uh, Derek Jason, but I go by Jason, I, legally I have to advertise myself as Derek Jason Scott. Um, because if I say Jason Scott, and then the, in the system I'm Derek Jason Scott, technically if they filed a complaint, it may not cross-reference to me because um, it's uh, not being honest with the public about your name. What, what about you can do is have a firm name, like I could have Scott Realty if it were available, and that would be acceptable. I wouldn't have to put Jason Scott out there that way because I can market the firm or the LLC. That would be fine. Um, um, but, I had a question. Yep. Okay, so my I go by Val, but my name is Valerie. Is that a problem? It is. Oh, yeah. so now you what if I've signed documents with Val? Do I need to go back and fix those? Um, it They look at when did you start? So if we had this conversation today and from day on you do it correctly, then you're fine. Okay. Because we had that conversation. Um, okay, cool. The other thing too was get it in writing, which um, I just wrote that. Like if you have a conversation with a client, if you have a text with a client, if you, you know, text, the thing about texting, it is in writing, but you either need to screenshot it or be able to access it. Like we just closed the commission case I was working on and we had to go to the phone company and get text messages from 2019, uh, 2022. And thank God that her iPad actually had the messages on it. And it wasn't on her phone because that was like two phones ago. Um, oh. But thank goodness her iPad did have it um, in the cloud, the iCloud. Um, so otherwise, had we not had that grab, you know, we couldn't defend a conversation we had with a, another agent. The other agent was claiming we didn't have that conversation. Um, and she's like, I know I did. I texted with him about it. And sure enough, we went back into the iCloud and she did have the conversation. So he couldn't feign ignorance anymore because he was lying. So now he is in um, as severe trouble as, you know, the implication is on both agents, not just him, not just her. So, um, um, number one complaint, material fact. Um, I, they are beating it over the drum. More than half of the complaints, which are like 780 now. So that's 1760 are all and it's um it's all material fact like 48 percent of them <clears throat> let's see i don't want to uh firm license this has actually popped up four times this week you can get a firm you can have a firm license if you're just using it as a pass-through to pay yourself like if <clears throat> I'm Scott Realty and I register and you have to get a firm license from North Carolina real estate, but I don't, I'm not running an LLC. I'm not marketing as an LLC. I'm not out there as Scott Realty. I'm just paying myself as the LLC through. So Keller Williams would pay Scott Realty and then I would pay myself a salary from Scott Realty under my LLC. I don't have to, it can be a pass through account. Does that make sense? No. Okay. Yeah, so, run it one more time, Jay. <laughs> so don't like if if I want to just get paid for um, tax reasons, um, as like if I want to be an employee of my own firm, like I don't have to go out and get a BIC, and I can get a, a firm license in my surname, which is Scott, so I could get Scott Realty if it wasn't taken, and I get my firm license. And KW then could pay all my lists, all my commissions to Scott Realty. And then me, as the sole proprietor of Scott Realty, could then um, pay myself a salary for tax purposes. Um, but if you're going to market Scott Realty anywhere, like if I'm going to put it in a Facebook post or I've got it in my profile page or anywhere else, you can't, the public can't see Scott Realty because it's, once you go public with it, it's not, no, it's no longer a pass through it, a firm. Um, it's only for payment purposes and tax reasons only. On the moment you start advertising, 
you've got to um you got to get a bit you got to get qb like all those things so the other biggie was um i'm saying oh, this scares the bejesus out of me is um people saying oh call me if you want to know what your health is worth um are you a real are you an appraiser no so you don't know what their house is worth right so you can talk are what the value of your house is you so a cma you can say the market shows your house to be in between this range um so we've got folks out there speaking out of turn saying contact me if you want to what your house is worth well unless you're an appraiser you can't tell them what their house is worth because they could come back and then and say you told me my house was worth 350 and I only got 325. Where's my three? Where's my 25k? So, um, can you, value Jeff, can you say something? He's sorry, but can you say something like, "Give me a call if you want to know a free market analysis of your property." Perfect. Yep. Okay. The two words are value and worth. Okay. Thank. That's you. what you cannot say: are value and worth. Um, because we would need an appraiser's license to do that. Um, and I'm just hitting these because literally I stopped this class like an hour ago. Um, so y'all are the first three people, four people to get this. Ah. Um, there are some technical changes. Do y'all know any people that are licensed in North Carolina that really aren't in North Carolina? Like like, my, like multiple states or whatever? Mm-hmm. Yeah, it, it used to be that they could just pay $50 to North Carolina and give proof of a class they took and say, hey, North Carolina, will you take this class for my CE? And they're no longer going to accept that. They actually, that person will have to do a Zoom. There's technology enough out there that an out-of-state person that's licensed here can take a state class. So they're no longer going to accept that $50 fee and proof of a class taken. Because what a lot of people did was they did their CE in another state, used that certificate and paid the $50 and kind of got a duo. Um, so that won't be happening anymore. That is going away. Let's see. Okay. Those are some of the most, those are the big ones. Um, the other thing we're seeing a lot of is something called a wholesaler, um, not to be confused with a flipper. Um, a wholesaler is when they are buying a house, like a house, you've got a house listed, it's on the market. Someone makes you an offer on the house that's accepted, but then they market the house, meaning it's going to be a double close. So those are called wholesalers and they're getting ready to come down with some rules and regs on that because you can't be acting as a brokerage. Like you've committed to buy that house and you don't own it yet. Um, that's why you see the question own for less than 12 months, own for a year, own for more than a year. It's not only for government loans like VA and USDA and FHA, but they also ask you because you see if you're the ownership of it or not. Um, but that's got to, um, they're going to start cracking down on that. So just though we've had several in the office that it is a legitimate sale and they have found a buyer for that property. And what they're doing is if you have it listed at hundred and say it's a flip house, it's a hundred, they've not done the work on it yet. They find an investor that'll pay 120 for it. So they pay the hundred on the first close they pay the 120 on the second close and they pocket the 20 as the agent. So um, that's getting ready to, as the wholesaler. So that's getting ready to um, crack down. Um, so. Jason, what's the difference between a flipper? I, I thought it was kind of like the same thing. So a flipper is one who's actually bought it directly from the seller and then is flipping it. Or they flipped okay. it and they are directly selling it. Okay. Um, yeah, and they just, it's people that are doing the duo combo, the duo, like say Christy had a house or a townhouse that needed work. 
She mm-hmm. knew it needed work, but she called you as an investor. I've got it listed. Um, she's hired me to sell it. We put it on the market at one, 100 because we knew it needed work. But then you as an investor found somebody or you as another agent found one of your investors and said, hey, I think we can get this for about 120. Mm-hmm. And then you pocket the 20K difference. So, oh, okay. And as a finder's fee, it's kind of the way they're treating it. Okay. And they're not, not going to let that go through anymore. It's going to stop. Um, let's see. Um, the other thing, so here's the thing and material facts, and I can't say it enough. The definition is anything that um, might influence influence the decision to buy or sell. So, and people say, well, what if I, what if I found a, would that be an influence to buy or sell? So if it is, then yes, it's got to be disclosed. Um, And you as an agent, um, that was another thing. You as an agent, if you're even selling your own property, the moment you know something, you can't say I can't disclose or you can't get an inspector report and say, well, I didn't open it. Well, there is no such thing as I didn't open it anymore. Um, you were a paper trail that was sent to you. Um, it was on you to open it as a responsibility. And like we had someone cancel a contract and said, we found some moisture in the crawl space. They didn't share the actual reporting. They didn't share the actual inspection, but they said in the email, we're canceling because we found some moisture in the crawl space. Well, now that agent is now responsible to disclose there could be potentially moisture in the crawl space. The right answer to me would be contact the buy- the sellers and say, sellers, this is the reason they canceled. I can't keep that from the public. We need to get someone out there to see what the severity of this is. Um, so, and even again, the other example they used was as an agent, can you say no rep on the RPD? And you can, but it doesn't alleviate you from being responsible for it. So like, where would you disclose all those things if you're required to disclose them? If it wasn't on the RPD, you'd have to write the whole thing up. So um, that was another biggie because agents are helping and doing and flipping. And as business is slowing down, they're finding different vehicles and places to raise money or get money from their expertise. We just need to make sure we're following rules and regs with them. So um, those are biggies on that front. The other was one more that I thought of while I was talking that I need to tell you. Um, It'll come to me, I'm sure. Um, Anything y'all want to talk about? I'm still confused. Not confused. Let me not say confused. I'm still perplexed on the name thing. (laughs) Because all my all my business cards say Val, so I'm, am I going to need all new business cards? Yeah. Um, yes. Yeah. <sighs> yeah, like okay. that's illegal. Like you can't. You um, could say Val in quotations, but you're going to have the Ellery on it. Yeah. Um, now, mm-hmm. if I have, if I use my email, my email has my whole name. That's fine. Um. I still have to change my name. Like if I if I always have my email there, you do I still have, have to thing. change all that other information? <laughs> yes. Yeah. Well, Dang. technically, I, since I, I can defend it because we talked about it today and going forward, you're going to do different. So um, I wouldn't do it until the next round, but I start using your name. Okay. Um, and you can, that can be your slogan, like Homes by Val, that's fine. Then you just say Valerie you know, Rainer. Um, that's perfectly fine. But there's nothing wrong with that part. You just got to, your whole name's got to be, you can't hide your whole name, basically, is what they're saying. Okay. Jason, are you saying it has to be our legal name as what we registered with the commission as? Yep. So, like, what is on our license, basically? Yep. Okay. What is on your license. Right answer. Like, if my name... Like I've got a cousin and her name is, um, um, well, let's use Cindy Dudley. Um, her name is Lucinda. 
Yeah. It's not Cindy Dudley. Um, but for 30 years, she's been known as Cindy Dudley. But on her license is Lucinda. Um, now, she has an, a company that's Dudley Realty Group, which is her surname. So that is perfectly fine. And she can do that because her she's marketing in her um, surname. But what not, would, okay. What do you so in other words, like with my name, I just looked at my license, my real estate license says Kimberly Jacobs Baber. So I have my maiden name spelled out. Where I usually will name, sign. yeah, it's only first and last, so you you don't have to have Jacobs on there. Okay, so I don't have I can sign it as Kimberly Baber. That's yep. legit. Okay. Yep. Okay. Yep. So, and it's in your marketing to the public is where it's going to be. Okay. So that's the issue is what they're saying is marketing to the public. In case the public, get, oh. if there's ever a complaint or anything back on you, they have to be able to find your legal name that's on your so, license. So should technically back to Cindy Dudley, should Cindy, like what you were saying earlier, when we sign our documents or whatever, should she be signing Lucinda? Because if they went back she, and looked, she could say Lucinda in parentheses Cindy Dudley. Okay. Okay. Because her legal name is not Cindy. Right. So that's why you can do the parentheses. Okay. Good question, um, though. Yeah, Jason, I got a question. Um, you may have already went over this, but awesome. um, when we go, um, say for example, I'm kind of new here and I don't really have any listings. How is that with the um, firm if we were to want it to advertise or, or kind of promote um, other agents listing? We have to get permission from them or how does that work? Yes. Thank you so much. I'm glad. That's the other thing I was on the tip of my tongue and I said, we well, come to me. Thank you. Okay. Um, you have to have permission of that agent to share it. And not okay. only permission of that agent, technically the seller has to say that they're okay with you sharing it. Okay. So we're going to have to add into our listing conversations. You know, are you okay with if any of the other agents in our office market your property as well? Now they'll list me as your agent, but um, I need to know if it's okay if other agents in my office market the property as well. Because if they can't, then you like, if I have a listing and my client says, no, you can't, then I have to, you can't list, you can't share it on Facebook or mm -hmm. Instagram or wherever else. Now, they do check off in the listing agreement. Do you agree to social media? Do you agree to look for a sign in the yard? Do you agree to, that's, that will cover us, I think. I've, I've asked the question back. Um, but you do need the permission of the agent. Um, that. Like, if you don't have that, we're all in trouble. Um, <laughs> or can be. But you, like, I, I shared one last night from Roger Abbott and Terry. And I said, you know, new from Roger and Terry Abbott with Keller Williams Central, you know, this house is lovely, blah, 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 blah. So I gave mm -hmm. them credit and the mm -hmm. firm. And I just said it wasn't my, you know, it's not my listing. And mm -hmm. then Roger even commented, thank you so much for sharing. Um so technically, if you don't have the agent's permission, you shouldn't be sharing. Okay. So Jason, when we do open houses, is that why, like I read on, I, I can tell the agents that know how to do this. Yep. Like you read their open house information and they'll say listing brought by, you know, yep. ABC Realty kind of thing. Yep. Okay. So we have to put that on all our marketing materials when we do an open yep. house. Like listed by Jason Scott, open mm -hmm. house hosted by Kim Baber, Kimberly okay. Baber. Okay. So, and uh, Portia, funny thing, you might like this. Um, Christy was on the thing today as well. And she asked about how many, oh, people signing for property. And she said, what if you've got a church and the people want to sign for it? Oh my God. <laughs> Who can sign for like an entity? And I, I thought about you immediately. I thought that was cute. Um, so here's the other thing on signing. Um, <laughs> one person can sign something but all of them have to agree to sign sign it over. So he said it's to your detriment not to have every signature on the first piece of paper. Mm. So if we list something and I'm the executor and mm -hmm. I have the power to sell the house, that's perfectly fine. I've got the paperwork that says I can sell the house. 
But when we actually go to attorney's office to transfer title, mm -hmm. even though I'm the executor, every mm -hmm. single person has to have every. So if I've got five heirs and three are married, I've got five plus three, I've got eight. Mm. So if I don't have all eight up front, I better have all eight at the end. So that's why he said you 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 really need with signatures to make sure you've got up for an agreement rather than finding out afterwards you don't. So Yeah. Um the same thing with uh, someone asked about entities and companies and churches and what it depends on their bylaws or their how their articles of incorporation or how the company is set up as to who can make a signing decision on behalf of the company. So it doesn't have like if you got an LLC that's got four partners, if you've got one listed as that they can sign, that's fine. It only takes one to sign. Um, Cause you can do the LLC signed by Jason Scott. Um, like I got a property with 18 heirs. Ooh, my so I've got, it was the grandparents property. Six children have now been deceased and Ooh. now we're at, 18 heirs well, oh, 10 are married. so i'm going to have 28 signatures on a piece of property only in north carolina so, <laughs> right and all 28 have to agree to sell oh gosh so um, yeah let us know how that goes yeah so <laughs> um all right what, you, what do you guys have what do y'all want to talk about y'all want to talk about forms there's a new rpd coming They've added it's look the look and feel is cleaner and crisper and easier to understand. I've not seen it, um, but supposedly they've added sewage some sewage information um, mm. and sept septic information disclosures um, and some some more cleaner material fact stuff. So they can still do no rep. They can still say yes or no. It does not say that they're not liable for it, though. Okay. What else you got? Um. Because again, I'm here to talk with y'all. Do you got a cheat sheet for the material facts, Jason, that you're going to share, or I can look online? I am. He suggested the firm to put out the most asked questions. Okay. Good. So, um, we'll put one out. Um. And I'll take it from the most reported material facts that haven't been disclosed to the state. Okay. Um, but I thought the other was that municipality thing was a big deal. Mm -hmm. um, because if you don't look to see that they're building a road or building a school or um, zoning for commercial or something five years from here, you're going to be in trouble, potentially. Um, and the other thing I found very interesting, he said it multiple times, he said that the legislation, all the elected officials who write the laws will not hold the actual sellers accountable. So the people that are enforcing these rules and regulations have to be the realtors. Really? So... Mm. Yeah, I thought that was interesting. Yeah. Um, so the realtor, so us holding them accountable are in essence not holding their constituents accountable. Does that make sense? Yeah. Like they not don't want to put it on people that might vote for them. That's what I was saying. Year. Yeah. They want the industry to do it as an entity. So um, anyway. Um. So the big thing to me would be your legal name. Um, there's no such thing as a one click rule. You need to have the firm on the like visible period. Like don't, and it has to be KW central. It can't be just KW anymore. I mean, you have to actually have to put the whole thing up there. Um, because they could say KW, there's like 600 offices. So, you know, which KW? Yeah, I try to put the logo on everything and the name. So. Okay. Um, like I, I have it as my backdrop on my picture. So mm -hmm. when I post something, it's like literally there, but I also, you know, hashtag KW Central is enough. 
Um, even though the, I found out today there's actually a KW Central so in another state. Oh, the other thing too, it used to be for your firm license, you had to register your firm name in every county that you were doing business. Because of technology and electronics, you only have to do it in at least one Register of Deeds office. So like I start Scott Realty, I'm not going to use it as a pass-through firm. I'm going to actually market myself under Scott Realty. I have to get my firm license. I then have to go to the Register of Deeds and record at somebody's office, one of the 100 counties, and say, I want to record Scott Realty as doing business in this county. And then it blasts out to the whole state. So um, used to have to go, if I was doing, I had to do it in Chatham. I had to do it in Alamance. I had to do it in Guilford. I had to do oh. it now. Um, anywhere I was act, practicing, if I was going to market in that area. So now you just have to do it the one time. So that was a good one. Um, the other thing, if y'all didn't get the message, um, this PSD is driving me nuts, um, professional services. Um, and truly, and, the, and I use this example because it is one literally I had to sit in front of a judge for is we had an agent that left our office. I cannot, I don't know where that agent is. Their email don't work. Their phone don't work. I don't, they could be dead. I don't know. I can't get a hold of them. Um, two and a half years ago, before I started, they, we had a transaction with this client and he's like, well, there was a vacant lot beside of me when I bought the house. Well, now they've decided to build a new house on it. Well, they did a survey and my fence is eight feet across on their land. So he's coming back to KW two and a half years afterwards to say, my realtor told me I didn't need a survey. You know, if I'd known the fence was eight feet across, I would have made the other sellers fix it. It's not my problem. I inherited it. Well, I can't find the agent. So the only proof I have of anything is the professional services disclosure. And I go to pull it up and we're under survey, it's blank. There's mm -hmm. not waived, there's not ordered, there's not who ordered it, there's not the company, that, it's just, it's not an NA. There's, it's just a blank line for survey. Well, I can't, what do I say to a judge? I'm like, well, yeah, my agent that I can't find told him I didn't need to. Like, I can't defend that. Like, there's nothing I could do. Um, so, I mean, in essence, he potentially has grounds to, you know, sue for sue for damages for a smaller lot than he thought he was buying. Um, now he's agreed not to do that, fortunately, but um, that's the example. So we can't can't have blank lines on the PSD. So, if anything, heaven forbid, were to happen to one of you all, or somebody that leaves the company like this scenario, I can't, I can't help you. Like, even if, even if I, I did find you, say you did leave Kim and two years from now you're at, you know, XYZ Realty, I have to contact you to say, Kim, your transaction from two years ago is saying you told him not about a survey. You're still on the hook for that, even though you're not with me. So it's you and me and our own insurances again, kicking in to go back two and a half years to fight this, to help, you know, and I, how could, how, what do I have to fight? Either your email with, you took it with you, or if you don't have email anymore with us, right? So if you don't have proof, you told him to get a survey, then we're kind of in trouble. So. Make sense? Y'all good? Yeah. <laughs> I'm looking. Y'all see my new haircut? I cut it last night. <laughs> <laughs> I keep looking. I feel so weird. I'm like, over there, over there. No. Um, <laughs> so, um, so the PSD, that's another one. Um, the other big thing is if you, if, if you would, please, please, please just submit stuff as you go. Like you're supposed to turn in paperwork within three days to your BIC. As a PB, you're supposed to give it to me before you get it all signed. Like it's not, technically you shouldn't be presenting it till I see it um, for accuracy. And if and what agents, some agents are doing are waiting until the end and dumping the whole file in and saying, I, here's my check, right? I'm not, I'm not paid. 
But we, I mean, you just dump 40 documents. I, I can't tell you you're, you're clean. So if you submit along the way, give me your WWREA and your listing. Give me your under contract and your disclosures. You know, give me your work um, deed and your plat and your, you know, give me all that stuff up front. Um, and that can be approved and out of the way. And when you get your check, all you need is scan it in and let me look at the check. Does the address match? Yes. And you get paid. Like it's that fast if you've done it along the way. Um, but the people that are dumping this big file is, you know, hindering themselves. So. All right. Anything else? No. Um, <laughs> lots of things. Um, I hope you're all coming tomorrow for the Tony Giordano thing. Um, I think that'll be great. Um, he's a great speaker. And even if you come for a part of it, if you can't be there for the whole thing, um, I, I doubt you spend 15 minutes without him and not pick up some knowledge or some motivation or some something. Mm -hmm. um, we'll have breakfast and lunch both. So if nothing else, come for the food. Um, <laughs> if you've not heard um, the Awards banquet got shifted a week um, due to um, an unforeseen circumstance that was out of completely out of our control. So it is not the 21st Thursday. It will now be Thursday the 28th. Um, same time, same bat channels, same country club, same free meal. I just need you to RSVP so we have a head count. Um, and what we're putting on the 21st in its place is the NCAA tournament day. So there'll be wings and things and pizza and- Wings and things. Of, yeah, some fun in the office <laughs> on the 21st. So don't give your day away. Hey, come, come by and watch a game with us. Have some wings and things. Um, and then tonight's career night, if you got anybody for career night, um, we do that the second Tuesday of every month. Um, and those are the biggies. So pan pancakes and playbook Thursday. And this week is open houses. Um, and it's going to combo teach. I'm doing part of it and Amanda Lynn's doing part of it. So and that's on Tuesdays, right? Tuesday? Thursday. Thursday. Oh, okay. Yeah, it's the um, second Thursday of the month. Okay. I want to come to that. Yeah. So, and how I remember it in my head, it's the Thursday after the Hillsborough meeting. Okay. The Hillsborough meetings the second Thursday, second Tuesday, so I know pancakes are the second Thursday. Um, then after we have pancakes, we go over and have lunch with a car for the um, for the association. So. But Jason, don't we also? I just saw something today that there was a um, basketball thing on Thursday as well. Is that true? It is. It's at a local brewery with yeah. Union Hall, and it's ever all agents. So okay. that was not technically us. We're just helping them get the word out. Mm -hmm. gotcha. And it's the ACC. So okay. it'll be local teams or ACC teams, but it's Union Home and it's at that brewery. Um, so the one that was posted on the um, weekly, you know, the daily email that we get that was the WAG, uh, yeah. cross countries moving a week? Yes, correct. To the Thursday, the 21st. Okay. Yes. Oh, Portia, if you need a uh, Jason from Home Specters, we'll go to Wendell. Okay, great. Jason from Home Specters? Okay. Yeah, or somebody on that team. They have a whole Raleigh group that goes out there. Great. Um, assurance, assurance also goes out there, too. Okay. Assurance. Okay, thanks. Yep, yep. Call them right now when I get off. Literally, I was opening that up and I saw your post. So. Yeah, they got to do it to pre dry wall. So I was like, okay, let me see if I got find yeah. money. Um, and that is the the Clay Street Tavern. I don't know where that is. Mebbin. Mebbin. Yeah. Clay Street Tavern. And it's all agents, any firm. Um, that's Thursday from 1130 to 530 at that Clay Street. Um, for Union Homes. All right. Unless you got something and you want to ask me specifically, we're good. Um, I will put, we're going to put together more, um, there will be an, a weekly hour with a BIC, um, and then PB&J is another hour you're going to have with a BIC if you're a PB. 
specifically. Um, and like in three weeks from now, I think it's three weeks is on the calendar for going to measure our house. So, um, like physically we will all get in the car and go to a house and, um, decide what our measurements come up with. I was wanting it to warm up a little bit <laughs> and come yeah. see different pancakes and, um, open houses. I think that'll be fun. Yeah. That sounds like a good one. Yeah. Um, you can do open houses so many different ways. Um, you know, I, and if you've not seen the new way that um, you can create a login sheet that goes directly to command, have you all seen that yet? Mm -mm. I saw it. I saw it when the, um, I don't know her name, the um, girl from KWRI, she came and taught our class here too. Yes, she, Sydney. Seymour. Yeah, Sydney, she showed us how to do it. Like, you walk into a house and basically she did it as a QR code. And yeah, let me see if I can share. And then it went to like her app, making it look like those houses were all hers or whatever. Um, wow, I'm excited. Okay. Let me see <laughs> if I can share screen. I'll give you a heads up. She did it as a QR code that day. She taught a class. It was very, like, it was really cool. Let me see if I can drag this back over. Sorry, I'm working on this screen. Um, change screens and I will take this out. Um, yes. Sure. Hey, can y'all see that? It's coming Ooh. in. Looks like my website, KWJ. Mm -hmm. Yeah. 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 Mm -hmm. All right. So what you do is scroll down to a house. Like this is not my house. Okay. Um, it's the house in the office. So if I click on that house, um, but then here, um, do you see that pop up? It says you have a, one more listing, contact the agent for permission. Did you see that? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. <laughs> um, if you click in the top barcode in the line all the way at the end, and do slash open house, it should create me. Oh, uh, yeah. So it says, welcome to 16 0 Pinnock. This is the sign in sheet for your house. First name, oh, last wow. name, email, phone number, submit. I would like Jason Scott to contact me about the property. And when wow. they, when they I, literally, the property scrolling across the bottom. If you go to the end of it and slash open house, mm -hmm. it will create a digital sign-in sheet for you. And these people that click in go straight into your command. Exactly. And it nice. says in your command, it will tag them as coming to the open house at 1607 Pinnock. Oh, wow. This is a game changer. Okay. Yeah, I'm sure. getting excited. Okay. <laughs> so if you wanted to iPad this or pad this or if you want to mm -hmm. laptop this or you know, you can still phone it. No, nothing wrong with that. Um, but literally, if you this creates a sign-in sheet, that's not intimidating. Wow. So, okay. Literally, Thank you. click on the house slash open house and da da command creates you a sheet. That's so, cool. Cool. See, that was worth the price of admission, right? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so. Um, I got a chat item. Is it a question? Are we good? All right. Yeah. Thank all you. Right. Um, I appreciate every one of you. And you know, if you need me, by all means, call me. Don't hesitate. That's what I'm here for. Um, and if I can't get back to you, y'all hopefully know that I do respond or I give you a reason I can't and tell you I'll call you when. Um, so, um, cause that's, you know, if I'm not accessible to you, you know, that's not helping you at all. So. All right. I appreciate you. each one of you. Give me give me a call. Give me a buzz. And if you got topics or something to talk about, let me know. Sounds good. Thank you. Appreciate y'all. Okay. Bye-bye. Great to see each of you. Bye.